and good afternoon to all. Uh, my presentation is directly related to the uh, guiding questions of webinar one, as jointly organized by CIV and UNISDR, and it relates to the questions it themselves. Uh, so the, the main issue is enabling uh, risk reduction through planning. That's the title. I respond to this, yes, planning can, could maintain risk reduction in several distinct modes. I have to clarify this in the first place. Risk analysis and reduction involves a projection, an assessment of future developments, and implies devising efficient means of monitoring forces of development. Uh, as Luhmann has once stated that risk is colonizing future. Now, seeing future, assessing future developments is a very planning uh, uh, asset. The planning profession has this uh, training for, for uh, complex uh, systems. Uh, such art and science of colonizing future is the basic expertise and exercise of professional planning activity. This, this is one issue. But second, the assessment of risks in the city requires an understanding of the prospective states of uh, interrelated socioeconomic spatial systems. Risk takes place in space. So management and supervision of spaces entrusted with the planning profession, again, as a second uh, reason why we would uh, consider uh, the possibility of enabling risk reduction through planning. And thirdly, risk reduction requires the collaboration of various forms of expertise. This type of synchronization of efforts and efficient allocation of human resources is a capacity that the planning profession has inherited. Uh, human resources planning is part of the overall planning. Um, maybe I will clarify this as, as I go along. So there are at least three distinct modes uh, why we say yes, it's possible that planning could enable risk reduction. Uh, international disaster risk policy, disaster risk reduction policy, seem to target mainly the local authorities, mayors or provincial governors. These authorities are, uh, even if they are fully convinced to follow a power policy of DRR in person, they are temporarily there. What we would like to have is a sustainable uh, settled culture or consolidated culture of uh, risk reduction. And therefore, we have to target also the obvious the lo local. No, I'm not uh, going into constraints yet. Uh, the, the second slide, please. Uh, so the, uh, we should address a greater uh, spectrum of actors rather than simply authorities. Uh, but local communities and planners must be in the picture as well. And they are the actual uh, durable carriers of the disaster risk reduction culture and actors of, su of a sustainable DRR policy, not only the authorities that, uh, who are temporarily there. The planning system today has to consider and serve for various objectives in a, a combined understanding of the uh, local public and global benefits must be implanted in the, in the planning system. That's another aspect that we have to keep in concentrate, considering the framework of what we are discussing. Uh, finally, in this uh, slide, I want to underline the fact that uh, planning could account for DRR 
uh, if we think in terms of disasters, there are different contexts in which risks are tackled by planning. And I, in, I tend to identify these as reconstruction planning. This is post-disaster compensation procedures. Hello, can you hear me? Um, emergency preparedness plans or contingency plans. Uh, this is a specific type of plan uh, for the management of disaster circumstances itself. Mitigation planning is the main uh, concern. This deals with the reduction of risks and disaster losses. And finally, resilience planning has to re relate to the organization and achievement of a sustainable social and material development uh, and other context of planning related to disasters. Next, please. Um, now, the, the second major question is about the constraints, why this is not possible at the moment in planning. Uh, there are a number of reasons for that. Uh, in the first issue is that the, in many countries, bodies conventionally responsible for disaster activities still conduct policy. Besides that, uh, besides that, but the bodies that act for emergencies, search and rescue and command control units, are often the sole authority in disaster affairs. This is typically true for Turkey. So tents and blankets experts are assumed to be capable of DRR activities as well. This is not true, obviously. This is not valid as a statement. And this becomes a real obstacle in the implementation of near international DRR policy at the national and local levels. International relations in disaster affairs of many countries are also run by these national units. It is difficult for these units to comprehend fully the implications of the new policy, yet they would not tolerate other professional inclusions in the uh, issue of disasters, in the affairs of disasters. A second major constraint I see is that emergency planning is uh, most frequently used, is the most frequently used device in relation to probable crises and disasters, yet contents and preparation procedures demand extensive upgrading. In many countries, this is a valid condition. The practice of emergency plan preparation is often carried out by the non-eligible personnel. These plans often disregard the spatial context, the locational attributes of uh, facilities, and vulnerabilities. It disregards a system's view of emergency facilities. Um, it disregards vulnerabilities, risk assessment, and scenario development. And it disregards participatory preparation and community action. This is the major failures of the uh, uh, emergency planning. And I see that as a, as a major obstacle. This has to be updated, upgraded. Next, please. Going on with the, hello. Oh. Uh, going on with the constraints, I see no formal mitigation planning. Uh, risk management requires a contemporary understanding of planning. Mitigation planning is not described in the current legal systems, even if a type of obligation is expressed uh, in some systems for risk assessment, it is not explained how this is to be carried out. The use of the term land use planning is, to my mind, to subscribe to a reductionist attitude. It is based on the confines of the existing institutional structures. This narrow interpretation of planning is a significant barrier in our thinking. Land use planning is the product of the material requirements of the late 19th century, when development of technology and exploitation of natural resources was the main concern. 
scope of this conventional planning approach could only provide disconnected measures in DRR. Contemporary circumstances are significantly different and requirements are putting limits to growth and technology, protection of resources, and avoidance of risks. Our need is, therefore, for an integrated form of planning to monitor complex socioeconomic spatial systems and comprehensive analysis of risk sectors of a city for participatory action and implementation. To my mind, therefore, land use planning is a palliative in the DRR. Basic tools of land use planning, such as prohibiting, zoning, distancing of development, limiting densities, are decisions difficult to supervise. Such decisions must be integrated with other powers of policy, like taxation, rent control, transfer of develop development rights, uh, and other social support and incentives projects. Next, please. Can I have the next slide? Thank you. Uh, another constraint I observe is the unavailability of hazard information, uh, publicly accessible hazard information, if provided is a major instrument of monitoring market behavior. Demand and physical development follows that. This has not become a standard method of serving for DRR. Risk information has a taming effect in the market. People will tend to invest, purchase, or rent safer locations. A city-level hazard information base could contribute much to DRR. Another constraint I see is the absence of mechanisms to encourage DRR. That is, uh, there are some examples of such mechanisms, but uh, this should be extensively employed. Uh, this could be maintained by allocating sizable funds for the preparation of mitigation planning. Efficient examples of such plans could be awarded for their implementation by means of donations and credits. This approach generates a climate for competitive performance in DRR. City level, national level, even international level organization of competitive incentive triggering uh, on attractive funds could have a snowballing effect encouraging other sources to serve DRR as well. An example of such a system is provided by DMA 2000 USA. Uh, this is not operating in full due to, due to external reasons, but this, the very structure of the idea uh, is exemplified in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the basic law Robert Stafford Act. Funds, eligibility, procedures of application, criteria of evaluation, method of audit auditing are well described in this system. Now, this approach orients all bodies, units, and individuals. Think about their risks and make use of their creative powers to devise effective methods of tackling them. A culture of risk avoidance will be the consequence, will be the inevitable consequence of such an approach. Next, please. Next slide, please. Right. Uh, this is a conventional state. This is, this is perhaps standard in very many countries. The planning system and the disasters uh, regulatory systems have developed in their own trajectories. They, are, they do not recognize each other often. Uh, this has to be uh, overcome as well. Okay, maybe I'm using too much my, of time. Uh, let's proceed, please. Right, barriers, uh, barriers to local authorities and municipalities uh, often 
to my experience, are in the form of powers of the central authorities not to support the local, to refuse to support uh, DRR activities. They also often have the powers to intrude in the local plans. They can have powers to to, to identify special areas and, and make their central plans imposed on the local plans. That they may exercise powers to intervene even in the municipality budgets. Uh, such powers have been uh, generated very recently in this country. And powers to over audit, this is for just to create disturbance to the local uh, authorities. And so long as DRR expenditure are not officially recognized, such over auditing could be could uh, be a real trouble for the local uh, authorities. So barriers to municipalities is a very real area for studies. Next, please. Um, Well, a few points on the informal set settlements, perhaps. Uh, informal settlements are usually considered as shanty towns, but this may not be true. In, in, in this country, they are very substantial developments, and such unauthorized development may take very different forms. Uh, almost 70% of Istanbul is unauthorized. These are blocks, high blocks of uh, reinforced concrete buildings, but still they did not have engineering uh, services, and we don't know how uh, robust such buildings are. Uh, typically, uh, the, the main problem lies in Turkey for in such areas. Uh, regeneration projects is probably one way of solving this problem. Shanty settlements are, are probably less vulnerable in physical terms compared to such high uh, story blo blocks and districts. Vulnerabilities in shanty settlements can be appropriately dealt with, perhaps m more with uh, social programs, and financial measures. Next, please. So we have to differentiate uh, different types of uh, unauthorized blocks. The policies will have to differ in inevitably. Multi-stakeholder perspective, to my mind, is uh, directly related to the identification of risk sectors in a city. This is similar to the identification of economic sectors in the whole uh, system. And risk sectors uh, in cities are quite a number of uh, uh, sectors, perhaps. In each sector, what we need to have is an coordination of the uh, involved parties and generate participation within the sectors themselves to identify measures and policies to be followed. Next, please. My final uh, slide 10. Slide 10. Can I have that? Right. And where should our research efforts go is another issue in the guiding questions. I consider the development of prioritization methods uh, is a significant area of, of uh, research that we need. How do we prioritize our risks? Uh, where to attend first is a major scientific question, and this needs extensive research. Uh, hazard information availability to monitor land markets is, has a practical ends and this has to be dealt with with the technology and research. Development of effective tools of control for mitigation planning, as I have stated before. 
and the issue of involving private interests in mitigation funding. This is all I can state for the moment in response to the uh, guiding questions set in web, uh, webinar one. And I thank you for the patience you have had. Thank you.